Questo è l'A10 Thunderbolt II. Più comunemente noto come il Warthog. L'aeronautica militare americana utilizza l'A-10 per il supporto aereo ravvicinato, cioè per le missioni in cui l'aereo deve volare basso per coprire ed assistere le truppe di terra in combattimento. So our whole mission in life and our whole job in life is to take care of the men and women on the ground. It's the only thing we think about, it's the only thing we train to, it's the only thing we talk about, and it's exactly what this airplane is built to do. Ma questi piloti potrebbero essere tra gli ultimi ad essere addestrati a pilotarlo. Da anni, l'aeronautica americana considera il ritiro dell'A-10 a favore di un caccia più recente, l'F-35. E potrebbe finalmente accadere. Il congresso ha infatti approvato il piano dell'aeronautica di eliminare gradualmente l'A-10 nei prossimi 5 o 6 anni. Ma il dibattito pubblico sulla necessità dell'A-10 continua. E mentre alcuni A-10 hanno fino a 50 anni, gli F-35 costano circa 60 milioni di dollari in più per aeromobile e non sono stati costruiti esclusivamente per assistere le truppe di terra. There may be a day that I am called to potentially help save someone's life when they are having the worst day of their life. That comes back to my training and making sure that I know what I'm doing in the jet. Quindi, quanto è importante la 10? E l'aeronautica potrebbe davvero ritrovarsi presto senza uno dei suoi aerei da guerra più emblematici. So the only base that A-10 pilots train at is at Davis Mothin Air Force Base. Prima di volare con la 10, i piloti fanno pratica con il T-38 Talon durante il loro addestramento iniziale al volo in Texas. They fly completely different uh, based on their flight performance and characteristics. The T-38 is kind of like a sports car, it's quick, it's agile, it's fast, but the A-10 drives more like a Cadillac. Dopo aver completato l'addestramento, i nuovi piloti vengono trasferiti ai loro posti. I really like the mission of the A-10 and thought it was super cool. I like the idea that it doesn't matter what I'm doing, that I'm strictly there for people on the ground. If you look at it, not the most attractive looking plane, if you will. Uh, it's pretty, pretty ugly. It doesn't have the swept back wings. It's got, you know, big Hershey bar wings on it for like added stability. So it's, it's just a mean looking airplane. And that's ultimately like what a warthog is. What sound does the A-10 make when it fires? You know, like bird, 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 bird. And that's actually just the noise of the bullets exiting the barrel. This is the Galway 8 Avenger. It's a 30 millimeter Gatling gun. It's built by General Electric. And this is the largest Gatling gun ever built and put into an airplane. So it's got uh, it's seven barrels. It shoots at a maximum rate, about 3,900 rounds a minute. There's almost no target that the Galway 8 is not a valid weapon uh, to use against. As we go around, the titanium bathtub is one of the features designed specifically to protect the pilot in the airplane. So this whole panel right here, where you see these giant Phillips head looking fasteners, that whole panel is titanium, so you can You can hear all these are, are hollow aluminum, and that's rock solid titanium right there. This was one of the first fighter types that incorporated that into the design of the airplane, and it's the only one I know about that has a full bathtub encompassing the pilot. Uh, behind this panel right here, this is our single point refueling system right here, so pull that cap off uh, and fill the airplane up with fuel. Uh, we have four fuel tanks for a total of about 11,000 pounds of gas. If I'm topped off, I can fly for about three hours. And then once you add in aerial refueling, uh, we can fly pretty much indefinitely. And then as you're looking towards the back of the airplane, you can see we have a lot of hard points, uh, a lot of weapon stations on the airplane. There's 11 in total. In between those, we can carry up to 16,000 pounds of ordnance on those 11 weapon stations. This is a Mark 82 bomb body, so a 500 pound bomb body, just a, a blast and fragmentation type weapon that you drop it, it's unguided, on impact and it detonates. This is a uh, GBU-31. This is a 2,000 pound bomb with a GPS guidance kit on the back of it. So it's a, a coordinate seeking weapon, meaning I, I can input a GPS coordinate and that's exactly where that weapon's gonna go. Ma com'è la 10 a confronto dell'F-35 che andrà a sostituirlo? I sostenitori dell'F-35 dicono che è meno percettibile ai radar, ma i contrari sostengono che sia meno resistente dell'A-10, che ha elementi come la vasca in titanio. 
Un'altra preoccupazione è l'addestramento dei piloti F-35. Secondo Insider, una nota di addestramento del 2022 riporta che nessun pilota di F-35 sarà tenuto a eseguire simulazioni di supporto aereo ravvicinato nel 2023 o nel 2024. Per i piloti dell'A-10, il supporto aereo ravvicinato è invece il fulcro del loro addestramento, che inizia qui in un laboratorio di simulazione virtuale. They're going to start off in the VR lab and that's going to give them the sight pictures and the references on the ground and the references in the aircraft for the first time. So simulators are extremely important. They're able to practice everything in a safe environment with, you know, professional instructors before they get out and actually fly them on their own. Gli studenti si abituano ai pannelli di controllo e alle procedure di avvio dell'A10 prima di passare al simulatore di volo. We're going to open our air-to-air -air refueling door at this point. He was doing aerial refueling. It's a mission that the students actually perform in the aircraft pretty early in their training pipeline. Historically, without this lesson, it's usually taken about 10 to 15 minutes of talking to the students through getting the successful hookup in flight. Whereas, now that we're able to have them practice with this lesson, they go out on that first flight having already done it before. We want to make sure, we want to take a look at our airspeed as we're in formation with the tanker. Now the feedback we're getting from instructors is that they're just going right up to the boom and they're getting their hookup on their first try. For the VR sim, you're getting the muscle memory. Um, so the first time we practice it in the jet, we know physically what we're doing with our hands and uh, we know where our eyes should be, where we should gauge, and then our IPs are helping us fine tune those things. Dopo aver passato un mese nel simulatore e da studiare le operazioni di base dell'aereo, i piloti iniziano le missioni di addestramento al volo con l'A10. Capitano Lindsay Matt Johnson ha 5 anni di esperienza nell'A10. Oggi si sta esercitando per un nuovo ruolo, quello di pilota nel team di dimostrazione dell'A10, dove potrà sfoggiare le capacità del Warthog. I am about 2 hours shy of 1200 hours in the in the A10 itself. They call it like a crawl rock run uh, process. So I did it in the sim multiple times. Then we go out to the airspace for my first time with a floor, not actual floor, but a simulated floor of 5000 feet AGL. And then I go here, 2000 feet AGL, 1000 feet AGL, and then 500 feet AGL until I got through my first certification. Dopo aver completato alcuni giri e picchiate, Johnson passa a simulare un mitragliamento a bassa quota che è un attacco alle forze nemiche di terra. Viene usato nelle operazioni di supporto aereo ravvicinato. So when we do close air support, we are egressing, as they say it, from uh, in front of the target area. I'm going out about, you know, two, two and a half miles away at about 500 feet, and then I'm turning back around this way, and as I'm about just outside of a mile, I'll pop to about 30 degrees nose high, which allows me to get high enough to be able to see there is what would be designated as the friendlies and what would be designated as the enemy on the ground. And then as I visually acquire that out over my canopy rail, I'm then rolling in using both ailerons. My throttles are already in max. I'm rolling in and then I'm putting basically my nose position down on what we consider to be like a 20 degree wire. So rather than flying straight and level, I'm 20 degrees nose low towards the ground. I learned about the A-10 growing up. I knew I wanted to do something kind of to pay homage to, to my dad's time in service. I was young when September 11th happened. I was nine and he deployed two months after September 11th happened. That kind of stuck with me and I knew I wanted to do something that was going to give back to my country as well. La 10 ha debuttato in combattimento nel 1977, quindi a quasi 50 anni. È una delle ragioni per cui molti vogliono sostituirlo. Da anni, il Warthog è oggetto di dibattito tra l'aeronautica e il Congresso degli Stati Uniti. Alcuni leader dell'aeronautica hanno suggerito il ritiro dell'A-10 per potersi concentrare sullo sviluppo di aerei più moderni, come l'F-35 da 80 milioni di dollari. More why would you want to retire the least expensive, most accurate close air support system? I don't want to retire, Senator. 
Ma il congresso ha opposto tali richieste a causa del successo della 10 nei recenti conflitti con l'ISIS e i talebani e per il costo conveniente dell'aereo. It's tried and true. It's very rudimentary with the systems that it has, but why fix something that's not broke? It's been in every conflict that the United States has been in since Bosnia, Grenada, pretty much every contingent that, that the United States has been a part of, the A-10 has been pretty much the leader of all that. L'anno scorso, il congresso ha approvato la proposta dell'aeronautica per ritirare 21 a 10, riducendo la flotta totale a 260. Con il progetto di ritirare tutti gli aerei rimanenti entro i prossimi 5 o 6 anni. People don't realize how much maintenance actually goes into keeping these aircraft airworthy. You know, it's not like a car, you know. When we wake up in the morning, we jump in the car, start it and drive, right? These have starting issues, they have leaks, they're 40, 50 years old. They all have somewhere between 13,000 to 15,000 flight hours on them. Uh, and that exceeds the actual life expectancy of the airframe by, you know, 5,000, 7,000 hours. I critici della 10 potrebbero utilizzare i problemi di manutenzione per sostenere la loro opinione. Ma il costo di manutenzione dell'F-35 è aumentato del 15% tra il 2018 e il 2021. What, what happens to you when you finish the training? Uh, once we all finish, we'll go to the different assigned bases, so I'll be going to Korea next. This is fun to fly. It does a job that no one else does, and it's, you're, like, you're good at that. That is your thing, that's the A-10's thing. Dopo aver completato l'addestramento semestrale a Davis Mountain, i nuovi piloti certificati per l'A-10 inizieranno la loro carriera come piloti di caccia per l'aeronautica americana. The plane was built well before I was alive and knowing just like the generations of people that flew the plane before me were looking at the exact same gauges that I'm looking at. So it's, it's a pretty unique experience. I knew as like a younger child that I wanted to fly the A-10. My grandpa was in the army. He has seen the A-10 like when he was in the army do things. And so that was even more just like a further drive to pursue the airplane. Wow, everybody knows us for the gun and its capabilities. A thing that we take most pride in as an A-10 community is protecting the lives of the men and women that are on the ground.